Now, when the frustrations outweigh the pleasure, it's natural to want to stop the activity that we're doing. Sourdough can be a perfect example of this. Baking should be fun, and jumping in at the deep end just isn't always the best way to learn. So I'm going to give you a beginner sourdough recipe, and it's baked in a tin. This way, you're going to remove all of the danger of your loaves collapsing or coming out flat. We're going to use the exact formula that we would if we were going to bake a batard that's proved in a basket. That means we have the perfect opportunity to get used to handling our dough. We can also make any adjustments to the hydration before we move on and use a basket to prove the dough. This method is going to smooth over any potential disasters. We're going to get used to handling that dough and we're going to know what to watch out for during the fermentation and the proving, all with very limited stress. So into our bowl goes 279 grams of water and that's followed by nine grams of salt. We're going to dissolve that by stirring it with a spoon. Now, this is a really straightforward dough. It's 70% hydrated, so it handles super well. You're going to have a nice experience working with a dough like this. Now for this recipe, we're going to use 372 grams of strong white bread flour. This one has got a protein content of 13.2%. Now I'm adding 47 grams of whole wheat flour and blending it really well. Now here's a tip, try to source a bread flour with a protein content of 12% and above. It is possible to make this dough using a softer flour, but you're probably going to need to reduce the amount of water. Using strong flour and a sensible hydration gives us a rock solid foundation to work from. Half of the flour mix is added to the water, followed by a really good stir, just to blend those ingredients together into a porridgey consistency. Now my leaven is properly fermented, it's nice and bubbly, smells and tastes sour and fruity. I'm gonna add 69 grams of this to the bowl, and then I'm gonna mix it really well with a spoon. The rest of the flour now goes into the bowl, and once again, we'll bring that mixture together with a spoon. When it becomes too stiff, Simply wet your hand and then finish mixing by pinching that dough between your fingers. After a minute or two, the dough should look just like this, holding together in one piece, but still quite rough. Try to make a mental note of how this dough feels to handle. The dough is gonna sit and rest, covered at room temperature for 30 minutes, and I'm gonna give you a helpful tip on temperature very shortly. Okay, so we're gonna turn this dough out onto our work surface. Now, if you find this dough a little bit sticky, simply spray your worktop and your hands with a touch of water. We're gonna use the heel of our hand and we're gonna turn that dough over, making sure that it's thoroughly mixed. But compare how the dough feels now to the way it did before the rest. You should do this whenever you come back to the dough. You're gonna see in a minute in the video just how much this dough is transformed by time. Making an effort to assess the differences is gonna help you develop your intuition, which is an important attribute to have in the kitchen. Now we can bring this dough together into a ball using our bench scraper, and this tool will quickly become an extension of your hand. We're gonna leave this covered once again at room temperature for one hour. Now, if you want to, you can stretch your dough in the bowl, but I really like laminating it on the bench. Now, normally I would pull this dough out really thin, into a really big rectangle. But until you're used to handling the dough, you can just ease it out gently into any shape the dough decides it wants to form. Just ease that dough out until you think it's resisting and then stop. Now it's simply a case of folding that dough up into a small square. You don't need to follow any specific pattern as long as you get the job done. The dough is much more conditioned now, so it makes it easier to handle with our hands. Notice how I can use exactly the same action as I did with a scraper to bring this dough together. I couldn't have done this very easily with my hand before. And these are the changes that we should be trying to recognize as we're working through the process. In most cases, the dough gives us all of the information we need. We just need to learn how to tune in. The dough is gonna rest covered in its bowl to bulk ferment at 25 degrees Celsius. Now, this is where we're gonna to start to see the dough increase in volume. Now, since we mixed the dough, it's been fermenting for six hours at 25 degrees Celsius. The dough, it's increased approximately by 75%. Now here you can see the dough after we finished the lamination, and this is the dough after the bulk fermentation. But in addition to the dough increasing in volume, we can really begin to smell the fermentation now. It's smelling more like the leaven we used to make the dough at the beginning. 
And that's why it's so important to continuously smell and taste so that it becomes instinctive and we can draw comparisons throughout the process. The top of this dough, it's also nicely domed and we've got these small bubbles on the surface. It feels inflated, but it still feels strong and it jiggles freely in the bowl. Remember though, if your kitchen's cooler, the process will take longer. If it's warmer, the process is gonna go quicker. Focusing on what's happening with the dough and trying not to worry too much about time is key. If you're a beginner, try to set a day aside so that you have time to concentrate and focus. You can absorb what's happening. You're gonna get a lot more out of the process. So this is the point that I actually wanna begin the shaping process. Remember that the dough is gonna to continue to ferment while proving in the baking tin. Now after tipping the dough out onto the worktop, you can just gently stretch it out before folding it back in on itself. Flip it over, and then we're gonna leave it uncovered on the bench for about 15 to 20 minutes. When we come back, just lightly dust the top of the dough with flour and flip it over again. Fold the sides of the dough into the center, and then we're gonna roll that dough up. If you feel the shape getting a little bit too long for the tin, simply tuck in the ends and keep rolling. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than this. When we get to the end, we're just gonna pinch that joining seam closed. Now I always wipe the inside of my tin with a touch of olive oil, even if they're non-stick like this one. And I've been using these exact tins on the channel for the last three years, and I cannot recommend them enough. I'll link to them down below. Place the dough into the tin, seam side down. Cover with a plastic bag, and we're gonna leave it out at room temperature to prove. Right, so the dough has been proving at 25 degrees Celsius for two hours. It's nicely expanded, and the smell of the fermentation is stronger, but it's not overpowering. The dough feels nicely puffed up, but that surface is still taut. It doesn't feel baggy or saggy. Now you could bake the loaf now if you wanted to, but I'm gonna cover this again. I'm gonna place it in the fridge to cold ferment overnight. Then tomorrow, I'll be able to bake this at any time that fits my schedule. Now, if at any point during this process, you've found that your dough is sticky and it's been tricky to handle, then it could be that your flour isn't quite as thirsty as mine. So, the next time you bake, just reduce the water touch. I'm gonna to link to my sourdough calculator below in the description, and that's gonna make adjusting the ingredients super easy for you. Right, so my oven is set to conventional bake mode, and along with my baking stone, it's been preheated to 220 degrees Celsius. That's 430 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna slide that tin directly onto the stone, and then I place an upturned oven tray at the top of the oven just to protect the loaf from the direct heat. After 35 minutes, I remove the baking tray and then I continue to bake for another 10 minutes. That's a total of 45 minutes. Now, you don't need to use a baking stone. You can bake this directly on the oven shelf. It will take a touch longer to bake though, and it may not spring up quite as much, but you'll still have a fantastic loaf. You wanna aim for an internal temperature of 97 degrees Celsius, after baking. And this is what we have, a wonderfully aromatic loaf for sourdough. This would be at home on any bakery shelf. I like to rub the top of this with a touch of olive oil just to soften that crust and to continue the shine. Oh, this crumb is beautifully soft and creamy. It's nice and sour and that whole wheat flour just brings this complexity to the loaf. I do think the crumb's a bit kind of over aerated, let's say. So I think the loaf would have benefited from maybe another 30 minutes or so, proving at room temperature, but that's what makes this method so forgiving. And then once you've got this system down and you're used to handling the dough and understanding the fermentation and the proving, you can easily move on to using a banneton to prove the dough. Now don't go anywhere. Join me in this video here to find out how to reboot your sourdough process when things are going horribly wrong. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.